Grandmaster Andre Story. Y'all make it, y'all make some noise. Thank you, brothers. <clears throat> first, I want to first give all praise and honor to God, who is the lifter of my head, who is the source of my strength, who is the reason for the good that may dwell in me, and who is the reason for the good that may come out of me. Uh, it's great to see all these great leaders in the room because we know that there's no followers because followers can never teach leadership. Followers can only teach you to be a follower. The only person that can teach leaderships is other leaders. So therefore, I've always wanted leaders around me that know how to follow. I'm going to be real brief in the process of me running a business, being my own secretary, being my own treasurer, and sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes you know, working at, and uh, running a limousine business, I uh, got a little uh, places and uh, lost track of times and pretty much left all my notes at home. But I was told a long time ago, you should always be prepared. If you are a leader within the organization, whether you're a worship master, senior ward, I had to tell a worship master one time because uh, he wanted to cancel the meeting. But yet we orders, we elect somebody at a senior warden position. Why are you canceling the meeting because you have a senior warden? Why did we elect him? So he may carry out the duties, maybe an aide to the worship master. Yep. So we as leaders must always remember that. Leadership is defined in process. <clears throat> but which people can influence and accomplish objectives and direct others. We must always, no matter what position we sit in, because there are books out here that, uh, one, one question was asked, uh, you were born with leadership. I don't know no other way a leader can be, <laughs> to, to come across is to be born. Ooh. Now he can properly prepare himself for leadership because there's books, workshops, and sometimes we get mixed up with leadership and management. <clears throat> management work like this. We have a great hamburger operation that the McDonald's brothers started off because they had a great restaurant and Ray Crotch had a milkshake machine and they merged together. They burgers is grilled. They burgers is on a flat iron grill. You can be the top burger maker at McDonald's and all of a sudden get a promotion to Burger King. Don't go to Burger King talking about no grilled burgers. They flame <coughs> brawl over there. Hmm. They flame brawl over there, but they still great burgers. In leadership, we must define ourselves not by the position, because when you become a positional leader, that's the worst one. Wow. Because you're only a leader by the title. The, a, a true leader is a person that sits anywhere in the organization. Well, anywhere in the organization. There's a book out by a brother by the name of uh, John C. Maxwell it talks about the 360 leader. That 360 <clears throat> leader have almost as much influence as that person that sits at the top. In corporate America, they call it 20, uh, 28. Because the CEO of a company basically only have 20%. He only touches, he only deals with 20% of the person. And then his management is a part of that 20% filter throughout the organization. But that 360 leader, his leadership works from the middle to the CEO office, and he go hang out with the people in the mail room. That's a powerful person. We have those people in our organization <laughs> that's utilized. A lot of times what we do is we define our leadership based on our position. Then we realize that somebody else got more influence than we got. Hmm. Uh, there's a story about a pastor, a young pastor, that uh, came into a church in Indianapolis. And he wanted to get the, the glass stained windows fixed. And the deacon said, well, we're going to work on the door. 
We're going to work on fixing the new locks on the door. But the pastor wanted the glass stains fixed. Every time he wanted to do something, that deacon, that chairman of the deacon board wanted to do something else. Now he's a young pastor. He's in his 20s. He has a big congregation. That deacon is about 60 some years old. He had to bring that deacon in the office and say, I plan to be here for a while. You got a few good years left. I need you to follow my direction. If I want the windows fixed, let's fix the windows. But because what happened is people would see you because you've been around here longer. But they'll start doing what you ask because he's new. <laughs> Don't underestimate a person's age. An older guy told me years ago before I became grandmaster. He said, if you do not let these people at the table, if you do not bring these young people in this organization and let them at the table, even if you just invite them to a Grand Lodge meeting for observation purpose only, if you don't let them at the table, they're going to take the table. <coughs> it's, it's inevitable. I'm not the tech, I'm not the tech kind. My grandmaster is tech savvy. I just learned how to text a few years ago. And that's okay. But I have the ability to bring people together. You have to use your talent and where your talent is at. Do not fear other people within your organization. Utilize your talent within the organization. If you got somebody there that's capable, that can bring people together, you might have somebody that's better organized. My convention last year pretty much was organized by uh, uh, Brother Hay Haythorn because that was the relationship that he had with the hotel. Utilize your strengths. Utilize your people around you. <coughs> Inspire. Be a person that's a, be accountable. Have compassion. Lead people by example. When I was worship master, grandmaster, I doing a picnic, I'm using one or two people out in the park setting up. Because what happened, it's so easy for us to give directions because of our position. That's that one. That's that position we <coughs> would be. Brother so-and-so, I need you so-and-so. This large, I need you here, this and that. But when they, when you set a time, and you say we're going to be setting up at 7 o'clock for our barbecue that's going to be in this park that we've been doing annually, you be there. Yeah. Because when the grand master there, the worship master there, then you can point fingers. When they see you taking untied bags and tying up the, the pick up thing, they're going to be free to do it. They're not as quick to do it. You have those out there. You have those leaders that you do not have to tell. Yeah. <clears throat> a couple years ago, I had the opportunity to spend the entire day with a man that I was so, so, and I was impressed with him before I even met him. His name was General Russell Honore. Some of y'all will remember he was the man that led the Katrina in New Orleans. He came down on a helicopter in the middle of a disaster and told the New Orleans police, and I'm going to quote them so y'all excuse me, put them goddamn guns down. Hmm. That was his words. These people around here heard me, you got guns on them. They don't have no food, so they break in stores to get food and get water. Put them guns down. I spent the whole day with him. He told me, and he gave me his book on leadership. And one of the things he said was, <coughs> Leaders do not need reminding. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Leaders do not need reminding. Yeah. If you got a task to do and you need to be somewhere, take notes. If you don't take notes, call your brother. Yeah. Those of us that go on, I'm a pet peeve about because I some meetings I just can't make it. I don't show up to. But don't come back to the next meeting trying to change what happened in the meeting that you didn't come to. Come on, God, now look up. Now you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Contact somebody. Because this is all about leading. This is what defines you. Yeah. Contact somebody. Hey, brother, I didn't make the meeting. What happened to me? Well, you know, we voted on something. We changed some things that we talked about previous in the meeting on our association meeting. And I'm going I'm to skip that because I want to go back to, I'm going to come back to that later about 
uh, Illinois Association of Grand Lodges. When you have a room of leaders, and I was so excited when I got the call to come because I have, I have heard about what goes on in Texas. Uh, for a person that was here, some of y'all may not remember when Alicia came through here in the early 80s. Alicia was bad. That hurricane came through and tore up some stuff. I moved to Houston <laughs> back in 82 and stayed for a few years. And as they say, they do it big in, they do it big in Texas. <laughs> and yes, y'all do. And I've been impressed with some of the things I've seen. I am uh, tremendously honored that I had the opportunity to be here. I said I was going to be short. But there's five points I want to, I want to touch on as a leader. Talk less and listen more. Don't play favors. Don't have no favor, member. My grandmaster has, members of our Grand Lodge gave him the title as, uh, what was it, pet, uh, what did they call you, Grand? My teacher's pet. Teacher's pet because when I brought books in the lodge outside of our typical Masonic books, when I brought books about 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, develop uh, equipping yourself, uh, 17 irrefutable laws of leadership, all these books on leadership to properly prepare you for what, what's about to come your way. You want to be elected to the position, but you haven't done nothing in the process to prepare yourself to lead other guys that are smarter than you. Book wise. Yeah. yeah. You're not gonna hold my attention if you can't tell me something. Right. It's just that simple. I mean, if you just about coming out here and just doing some parties and this and that, we all know how to party. So that ain't really no class on party. We can do that. Can you tap into the alderman? Can you go up there? do you have some respect within your church? Who can you talk to? What leader can you define? Who can, who, can, who can you call on? Is there anybody that you can call on? Do your fair share as a leader. Lead the way. Be yourself and take responsibility of your actions. As a young worship master, I got into an argument with my grandmaster at the time, who was the most crucial Ronald Eddings. And I was defiant. I was, no, man, you're wrong. This, da, 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 da. And we was on the phone arguing about a date that both of us was wrong. I'm arguing about why you going to have a meeting the day after Thanksgiving. We got four-day va uh, uh, vacations, and now we got to come to a meeting, blah, blah, blah. Why you going to do this or do that? And he, he back at me. He, Story, you just always got to say something. While I'm driving and having this conversation with him, my wife opens up her calendar and looks and do like this to me. And the date that he had the meeting was not the date that I talked about and neither the date he talked about. We both was arguing over a date that we both was wrong. When I hung up the phone, I literally called him back and said, I want to apologize to you because I was wrong. I was wrong and I was because I'm, I'm, I just want to be right. Yeah. Now, before I leave you, let me borrow your imagination for a minute. Let's just say, God forbid this happened to us in real, but let's just say we died and we're on our way to heaven. But we got to stop at his desk. And at this desk is a man. But in order to get in here, he want to know your leadership. Not just your leadership. Let's just say your leadership is defined like a credit score. Ooh. What's your credit score? Wow. What's your leadership credit score? Do you need a cosign? <laughs> Do you need a cosign to get an app? Do your leadership require for a grandmaster to say, ah, uh, he'd be here sometime. Mm -hmm. wow. It is in, it's imperative that we do better as an organization. And one of the things we talked about is that
the Masonic organization of the 70s of what you talking about, 